Where did the lost ten tribes go to? Where did the lost ten tribes go to? There were originally twelve tribes of Israel, twelve tribes of Israel united in the land of Israel, land of Israel, that according to the Bible stretches from the Nile to the Euphrates River and encompasses a good portion of the Middle East, including the Isle of Cyprus, including parts of Turkey, including Syria and Lebanon, and parts of Iraq, and parts of Saudi Arabia and Jordan, and parts of Egypt. All of this region belongs to the land, to the tribes of Israel, should be part of the land of Israel, and one day will be. And in ancient times, the Israelite tribes dwelt in this land. They were not the only dwellers in the area, but they were the people to whom the land rightfully belonged, and they were there. And they were to be split into two different sections. They had the kingdom of Israel of ten tribes in the north, and the kingdom of Judah in the south two separate kingdoms. The northern kingdom was where the majority of the Israelites were. This northern kingdom was conquered by the Assyrians. All of its inhabitants were taken into exile and they disappeared. They lost consciousness of their Hebraic ancestry. But in the future they will return and they will remain together as coherent entities, cohesive units, and they eventually migrated or reached by different pathways the west, the western Europe, they settled in Western Europe, especially in the British Isles, including Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, and also France, parts of France, Switzerland, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, Scandinavia, that is Denmark, uh, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. That is where the Lost in Tribes are to be found there, and amongst their descendants overseas in North America, in the USA, and Canada, in Australia, and in South Africa, and New Zealand. That is where the Lost in Tribes are to be found today, and they are brothers to the Jewish people to the Jewish people who are now found in the state of Israel and in the diaspora and eventually these two halves of the Israelite nation will come back together and we trace the lost trend tribes of Israel, we trace them to where they are to be found, that is what we do, that is we research this we, our organization Brit Am Hebrew Nations researches this subject and we reveal our findings, we do research, we do, we work at Revelation, revealing the findings of our research and we also work towards the reconciliation of Judah, that is of the Jewish people and of lost in tribes of Israel, many descendants of Israelites now dwelling in Western Europe and on the whole not conscious of their ancestry. And a lot of sources tell us where the lost in tribes went to and one of these sources, one out of several different sources or many different sources that we use is the Talmud and related literature the Talmud and Midrashim, they tell us uh, that the Lost in Tribes went to different regions and one of the, uh, uh, one of the places or the uh, collection, uh, one of the, the assemblage, ensemble of locations that, the, the, that they describe consists of three places, the Sambation, the, to the place of the clouds and to Daphne of Antiochia. And we examine these regions and see where they were in the, in the terms of contemporary uh, terminology of that time, the time when these uh, announcements were made, what were they were referring to. We show how these areas related to specific nations of, of, who were known uh, that in the ancient world, and these same nations eventually migrated to northern and to western Europe. And this has proved that the people's present-day inhabitants of Northern and Western Europe and their offshoots are descended from the lost tribes of Israel. So we discussed the Sambation in a, previously in another talk, in another, and also in articles. So now we are concerned with the place of clouds, which was one of the places, three places mentioned. And it says, um, the quotes Isaiah 49.9, where Isaiah 49.9 9, uh, describes the exiles as those who are in darkness, show them, who will say, who will be told to show them yourselves, and these are those whom the clouds descend upon and covered, according to the source. Now at the symbolical level, great rabbis such as the Maharal and uh, Rabbi Desla, Miktav Meyali Al, they point out that um, covering by clouds can mean uh, uh, not to uh, can mean something physical, metaphysical. It can mean psychological as well. That in the national sense, the lost tribes of Israel, the tribes of Israel, will be separate. They will be distinct from the Gentiles. They will not intermix with them. They will be uh, separated in some in some sense from the others. Does not necessarily mean something literal. 
It is it is it has symbolical meaning, uh, allegorical significance. So that is one one uh, appreciation that is worth keeping in mind. It does not necessarily contra contradict other appreciations because there's also a more literal meaning that the the, uh, the expression uh, also is intense. Now we're told that uh, that uh, apart from the or another source, another source tells us lost and tribes went to the mountains of darkness. This is related to the concept of the, of the clouds being covered by the clouds. Uh, the two concepts are related, interconnected. Mountains of darkness have been identified by Rashi on Amos 4.3 with the mountains of Manai. And um, uh, this is where we find that the Scythians and the Sumerians in ancient times to have been located. Uh, whereas others locate the mountains of darkness with the Caucasus and the mountain, mountain area of Manai in, in a is to the uh, southeast of the Caucasus and it in, inter, 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 interconnects with it. It is part of it in effect, so the two sources do not necessarily uh, contradict each other. We also uh, told it elsewhere in the Talmud that the last ten tribes went to the mountains of Slug. Slug is another way of saying Sheleg, the mountains of snow, and snow in ancient times was uh, an explanation of the name Caucasus, Pruni. Uh, Pliny, a uh, Roman natural historian, wrote National, National, Natural History. He uh, reports that the Scythians called the Caucasus Crocasus, meaning, uh, he says, white with snow. So this is how the name Caucasus was understood. And uh, this, uh, these mountains of snow were an area where the Austin tribes were exiled to, according to the Talmud and Sanhedrin 94a. And uh, these regions, Menai and the Caucasus, as we said, interlock with each other. And from these areas of the Caucasus and the Manai uh, emerged the Scythians, the Sumerians and the Goths in ancient times. They emerged as, as uh, soldiers in, or as the settlers of the Assyrians and they uh, achieved their independence. They rebelled against them in the warfare and they came out of this whole jumble of, of, uh, of eventualities as independent, cohesive uh, ethnic, ethnicities. And there's a lot of uh, indications that these peoples were in fact Israelites, or that Israelites comprised a good, por a good portion of them. We also have the book of Hosea, the book of Hosea in the Bible. It speaks of the lost ten tribes, it speaks of Goma in the first two chapters. Uh, it speaks of Goma representing the ten tribes of Israel in their places of exile. And Goma is another name for the Chimerians, the Chimerians in Assyrian, Assyrian uh, literature known as Gimiri or Gomeri and similar names also in Babylonian literature and in the and in the rabbinical literature and uh, popular literature of the time this was another name for the Chimerians. The Chimerians were known as the Gom Goma, as the sinner from Goma, as part of Goma. So too this, with the Scythians who emerged from Goma, as uh, the Scythians were in effect a part of the Chimerians at the beginning. Later they separated out and became more distinctive in their own right. And the Chimerians, like the Israelites in the Midrash, were also in classical literature associated with clouds and mountains, were simply regions of darkness, as we, see, as we saw that the lost in tribes were. We have a, a word root, even in Latin, which is a, also in Hebrew. This word in Latin and in Hebrew connotes darkness, and this is one of the names given to the Chimerians. Also, a portion of the Chimerians are later to be found in the Crimean Peninsula in southern Russia. And uh, the, the term uh, in Latin, Aptenebri Chimeriae, meaning that is the Chimerian darkness, was applied to the Crimea. Apparently, it's a, like the dark and wet area. And so, the, this was, this was uh, how, uh, how it was described in, in the contemporary records. After that, the Chimerians entered the, the Europe during, uh, by a what is now Turkey, Asia Minor, across the Bosporus, entered southeast Europe and through the Balkans and moved onwards with westwards, eventually reaching into Scandinavia and into what is now the Netherlands and crossing the seas into the British Isles. And they are identified with the Celts, or at least with part of the Celtic civilization. Even the very name Celt, according to one interpretation, 
has, uh, has, has understood as meaning um, concealment or secret, also hidden. Uh, for, from the Irish, uh, Irish from Kaelt or something similar. So, so to the Scotty, the Scotty came from Ireland, the Scotty came from, according to their own traditions, came from Scythia, moved to Ireland, and from Ireland they moved to Scotland and they gave their name to Scotland, the Scotty. And this name Scotty in Greek uh, also was understood as meaning obscure or hidden. Maybe it had another meaning in, in their own language, but this is how the Greeks uh, understood the name to uh, to be uh, to be understandable. Also in Britain, in Brittany, that is in Western France, Gaul, there's a people called the Austronymians by the Carthaginians and Phoenicians who visited that region. And uh, this name Austronymians is also means hidden from the Hebrew word Sata. And we had the god Saturn. In Roman uh, tradition, uh, Saturn was... Um, was a god who had uh, previously dwelt in the Middle East and he'd been uh, deposed and expelled and, uh, and after sojournings in different areas he reached the British Isles and was not then to be found they said in one of the Isles of Britain together with his followers and this uh, since we this indicates that the Lost and Tribes were identified by the Romans as being the Isles of Britain since they also identified Saturn with the Israelites or with a portion of the Israelites and uh, this, uh, this is pagan mythology, but uh, sometimes pagan mythology also it was uh, used to represent historical realities. And uh, we also find uh, terminology relating to the Celts and the, and the Cimmerians, and uh, the, the Cimmerians having been found in, 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 uh, in uh, Celtic areas, we have a, 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 a source, possibly dating from 500 BCE, known as the Orphic Agonotica, and it uh, places the Cimmerians far away in the north, somewhere in the British Isles. It says the Cimmeria wooden from the sun rising from the mountains of Ripaeus in Britain, near the vicinity of Hades. Also, uh, another, uh, elsewhere it says far away in the north, on the way to the Ionian Islands, that is, on the way to Ireland. Homer in the Odyssey, uh, chapter 11, verse 19, mentions the deep sea of Okeanos, that is the Atlantic Ocean, which is the world's boundary. There is the city of the Cimmerian people. Night is forever spread over these unhappy mortals. So here too we have in Greek uh, tradition, Greek and Roman tradition, the Cimmerians being associated with darkness and with the clouds and so on. And... Uh, Someone wrote to me, Mark Williams, he wrote uh, us a letter, an email, and he suggested this land where the, the exiles of the ten tribes are covered by cloud. Could it not be the British Isles, which is famed for its fogs, as uh, the species, a fog is a species of clouds? And uh, this is uh, also a possibility. The cloud covered Britain, uh, and Britain does have a lot of fog and a lot of clouds, and Ireland has more cloud covered skies than any other country in, in the world. Now, Ireland is not as cold as, as Scandinavia, but it has more cloud covered skies, and that is one of the reasons why scientists uh, say that in Ireland there's a higher proportion of uh, redheads and the people with freckled skin and so on, and also blue eyes is also uh, uh, attributed to the fact that. The, in that region they have a, a large number of cloud-covered skies. And uh, there have been uh, articles written, a bit, written on this. You can look it up on the web. As, uh, for instance, we have an article which we just saw, Irish Red Hair is a result of our lack of sunlight by Linda Kelleher from Ireland. We have the Roman historian Plutarch. He identified the uh, Cimmerians with the Cimbri. Kimberley went to Scandinavia and also identified them uh, with, with the peoples who worked along the North Sea coast. So did other Roman uh, writers, Plutarch says of the, these Cimmerians, they are part of them still inhabit the remotest regions upon the outer ocean. These live in a dark and woody region, hardly penetrable by the sunbeams, their days and nights being equally continuous. They divide their year into one of each. Uh, another scholar, well, historian, A.W. A. Watmore, 
No, to the linkage in classical works of the Cimmerians of the Dark, in the Caucasus areas, also in the Crimea, in Britain, also in Britain, and in Scandinavia. And they're not so closely associated in the, in the eyes of, of the of, uh, contemporaries with the Cimmerians, with darkness, that, um, that uh, the name became a synonym for people dwelling in dark areas. In Italy, there's a, a group of bandits who dwelt in caves and hidden dark places, so they were nicknamed Cimmerians in honour of this phenomenon. Denmark has also been settled by the Kimbri, who were Cimmerians, and they were descendants, who were descendants of the Cimmerians, and, the, and also Denmark was later settled by the Danes from the, from the Israelite tribe of Dan. And the Midrash says that the, the, the uh, tribe of Dan uh, was to be found in the north, the, from the place where darkness comes. So the Dan too, which was in the same area, was to be associated with darkness. And the Kimberley, or the Kimmeria, this section of the Kimmerians known as the Kimberley in, in the literature, according to Plutarch, in their peregrinations and their movings around, they carried a metal bull with them. And so too in Scandinavia, they're known to have had a bull, cu bull cult, which is, uh, which is uh, of Mediterranean, of the type found in Mediterranean. They're taking it from Mediterranean lands, from Israelite areas. This apparently was an Israelite custom. The Israelites in the wilderness had been punished for making a bull calf, and, uh, and which they had intended to take with them too in their wanderings. See Exodus 32.14. And later, also when uh, Jeroboam from the ten tribes of Israel, when he set up his own independent kingdom and he split away from Judah, he set up two separate golden bull calves, one in Dan, in the area of Dan, the other in Bethel. And this is mentioned in the Bible, and uh, so this is also significant. Uh, another thing, we have the name Kimbri connected with the, with the word uh, Britain and Britannia, and uh, also not only in Britain, but also in Holland, in the Netherlands, and in France. Uh, this, uh, so this is uh, also in worth noting. And in classical literature, the islands of Britain would consider the edge of the world, the last section of Scythia, as Watmer points out, and they're associated with Cimmerian darkness. And so the same characteristics also are ascribed to Scandinavia. And uh, so we have here an indication of the British Isles being associated with clouds, with darkness, and also the Cimmerians and the Cimbrians also being associated with the British Isles and also, also too having been associated with the Ten Tribes of Israel according to the Book of Hosea and, uh, and literature concerning the Book of Hosea. And so here we have a connection of these different indications. And uh, there's more. One of the places to which the Israelites had been exiled was known as Habor. In 2 Kings 17, 6, there's a list of places to which the Israelites were settled, were exiled. One of them, these is known as Habor. Habor, uh, in, in the in Mesopotamian uh, mythology, was considered the place of the dead, the place where the dead were taken to, or the place, one of the pathways over which uh, the dead would have to travel. And so to the Isles of Britain were later given this same signification. Britain was known as the Isle of the Dead, and... Uh, According to the Roman Saturn, who was represented in Israel, was supposed to be found there, and uh, so and and uh, this too is um is of significance. And other sources, also from Second Temple times, amongst the Jews in Judea and also the Jews in Arab land, they place the lost ten tribes in the Isles of the Blessed. The Isles of the Blessed, it's a related concept. And it could refer to Britain and Ireland, or to Ireland on its own. And uh, so we have uh, various sources all pointing in the same direction, all in 